G'day mates, thanks for tuning in. If you're new here, my name's Nick, lovely to meet you, welcome to the channel. And for all the regular viewers, the subscribers, you know who you are. A big thanks for all your contributions, all your likes, all your comments, really appreciate it. It's you guys that have made this channel what it is today, and that is a great community where people can learn to improve their sleep and hopefully their, their life. <laughs> so if you like, you can hit that subscribe button and also the little bell next to it, and that way you'll get a notification every time I release a new video. And today's video is quite a long one. There's a lot of new information that I need to share with you. So if you like, you can hit pause, go and grab yourself a nice hot cuppa or a cold beer or a little cheeky glass of scotch. It's Friday after all. Find a nice comfy chair and I'll talk you through it. So the first piece of news I have for you is that So Clean, the makers of those ozone sanitizers, those CPAP cleaning products, are suing Philips for over $200 million in damages. This is massive news. And you might remember when Philips first announced the recall, they put a lot of blame on ozone as the major cause for the recall. People were using these unauthorized CPAP cleaning products and everyone knew they were referring to SoClean. And since then, it's done a lot of damage to their business, as you, can, as you would expect. And now SoClean's come out swinging with this lawsuit saying, whoa, hold on, Franz Van Recall. Your, it's not our fault. Your phone was shit to begin with. And regardless of people using SoClean products, you still would have had to have had a recall anyway because your phone's toxic and it degrades from heat and humidity also. So they might have a point. It'll be really interesting to see how that plays out. Now, personally, I do feel that ozone does degrade the foam. And the reason being is that I've seen a lot of evidence to support that argument. And also I've done a few experiments myself, which some of you might have seen. If you want to watch one, click the link above, uh, where it's not a real world, a real life experiment. I didn't use a so clean machine, but I did see the effects of ozone on the foam. And it was pretty nasty, all right? The foam was basically melting in my hands. Now on top of all of this, there's also a proposed class action against so clean from the users of the product. It's a 46 page document, it's quite lengthy, I'm not gonna go through it all, but basically the allegations are that SoClean misled consumers into believing that their product was safe, and this proposed class action basically says that it's not safe. And here's a little extract from the document. According to the lawsuit, the levels of ozone generated by SoClean's devices are as much as 560 times the FDA limit. It's just one little piece of that document that I found interesting. So that's pretty huge news. So you've got So Clean suing Philips, and then you've got this class action from the users against So Clean. It's the circus all over again, whole lot of drama. Now, not long after Philips announced the recall, ResMed were quick to announce a statement regarding the safety of their CPAP machines. And they jumped on the front foot and said, hey guys, it's okay, our machines are safe, we don't use the same foam as Philips, Everything is all right, carry on. And I don't know if that statement is 100% accurate. I've seen a lot of evidence that suggests that ozone still affects the ResMed foam as well and causes degradation. And I'm gonna show you some of that evidence now. Now, if you've never used an ozone machine before, I think that statement is very accurate. I don't think you have anything to worry about. But if you're someone who does have a ResMed AirSense 10 machine or another ResMed machine, and you've been using an ozone cleaner for any significant period of time, months to a year, year to two years, whatever it is, then you might wanna pay close attention. Now I have a lot of information on this, but I'm just gonna share with you a select few examples. I'm gonna start with some forum posts. Some of these forum posts date back a bit, which is, which is great because it shows that these problems were happening well before 2021. So this first one's from September 2019. Hello, has anyone seen particles like this floating in their ResMed water tank? I have been using the machine for two years. I clean it every week and use SoClean every day. The particles are green in color and almost look like fibers. The particles are also inside the tubing inside of the machine. They went inside the machine, took it apart and found inside the machine the foam breaking down, as you can see in the pictures. And this is a little comment after 
on the thread. So when you have forums, you have a thread and everyone gets to comment. And this was an interesting one. I have seen this many times repairing CPAPs. I have a dream station blower chamber on my desk at the moment the same way. Something is deteriorating the foam. Ozone air freshener. This is back in 2019, two years before foam gate. Very interesting. All right, so clearly back then there was already problems starting to emerge. Another one, ResMed AirSense 10 air pump foam filter. Was getting pieces of foam blown into the water tank. Disassembled and found that 75% of the round foam filter at the top of the air pump, that's the motor, the turbine, had disintegrated. I think it was caused by ozone from daily sanitizing using SoClean. I reassembled without the filter in place, but want to buy a replacement. Does anyone have parts diagram that identifies the part number and a source for purchasing one? Right now, this one was August 2020. Once again, before Foamgate. The next post is from July 18th, 2021, so just after Foamgate. ResMed AirSense 10 and SoClean issue, see pictures. I've had a ResMed AirSense 10 for a little over a year. Upon recommendations from my friend, I also purchased the SoClean 2. It's been fine until the last few weeks. I started noticing black specks in the water chamber of a morning. That's a common theme here. People noticing foam in the water chamber. So keep an eye out for foam in the water chamber. Anything that doesn't look like it should be there. I'm pretty good at cleaning the parts. I cleaned everything again, but still noticed there was foam in the water chamber. I went to YouTube to see how to disassemble the CPAP machine. That's when I found the foam in pieces. Now I know where the black pieces are coming from. I'm ready to sue ResMed. Then I see the warranty doesn't cover because of the so clean. So there's a few posts. I've got a lot of posts, all right? Lots of them. But I've also started getting a number of emails from viewers. Uh, when they first started coming through when Philips announced the recall, I did think they were potentially fake. So I do have to apologize to those people that were sending them through because I sort of disowned them, <laughs> didn't really give them the time of day. But look, I do believe they are genuine now, so apologies. And this is one from Fred anyway, I've got a few of them. Uh, I have a ResMed AirSense 10, I've had it for four and a half years. I've also been using SoClean for three, three and a half years. I've started to see crap in my water tank. After watching your video on how to take the machine apart, I noticed the foam had completely broken down and was all inside my motor with the foam dust. I have the pictures. Until this happened, I had no idea of any other machines with foam issues. I'm sure I have inhaled the foam particles. Let me know if you're interested. I have been in touch with ResMed, but they have seen to have gone silent. So there's just a few of the many examples that I have, but I think the evidence is pretty clear, and that is that ozone certainly can affect the ResMed foam and cause degradation. So if you're someone who does have a ResMed AirSense 10 or S9 machine, whatever you've got, if you've been using ozone to clean your device for any extended period of time, you definitely need to be aware and you need to keep a look at in your water chamber and look for any evidence of the foam degradation. You'll start to see little particles and stuff. And if you want to, I'm gonna show you now how you can take apart your AirSense 10. If you wanna check that foam disc and check the structure and integrity of the foam, and you only need to do this if you're someone who's been using ozone for an extended period of time. And it's totally up to you if you want to do this if, and you feel like you're capable of doing this. It's not too hard, but at the same time, if you try it and you fuck it up, don't come and blame old mate Nico here, right? Because I'm only trying to help. All right, so let's have a look and I'll show you how to take it apart and check the foam disc. And I've, I haven't checked the foam disc in this machine. This is a used device, so it'll be interesting to see how it's looking, but I imagine it's looking pretty good. And I just want to clarify that I don't think Resmin needs to have a recall or anything like that. You know, for I don't think their foam's toxic, I think their foam's fine, but it's clear that it can degrade from ozone. All right, let's have a look. All righty, now normally when I'm working on CPAP machines, I use this, this little iFixit kit. It's cool, you can pick them up on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description where you can get it. But it's just got all these great little screwdriver heads, so any sort of 
work at home, electronics, it, it comes in handy all the time, but you wouldn't believe it. This one here, the T10 hex head, that's the one I need. And I don't know what, I, what I've done with it, it's somewhere. But normally you just take this out and then you just put it in, in here. But for the time being, I've had to resort to using instead, which I don't recommend, the old DeWalt. And that's sort of what it looks like. Little, little hex head. Sorry about those bad nails. Right, but anyway, let's do it. So, this is how I do it. Now, there'll be ResMed engineers and mechanics looking at me right now going, you're an absolute amateur, but at the same time, I don't care. This is how I do it. That just pops off. I'll show you what, how I did there, sorry. Just that little part there. You see that little groove? Just get your nail in there. Boop, just pops up. That's the little front shell. And I just pop this off as well. I just pull. There it goes, just see that? Just pops off. Just a little click wheel. Boop. Now, you take out the humidifier chamber. Flip the old girl over. Now on the back, what I take out is one, two, three, four. This here is where your heater plate is for your humidifier. So you'd only need to take this off if you were changing the fuse or you had a problem with your humidifier. Anyway, we'll just take these out. And then you've just got the two here at the front. They're all the same size, which is handy. So, whoop, whoop. And now we can take off the whole shell. So this whole plastic casing. And it sort of clips in here at the back. I don't know if you can get it from the back. I normally get it from the side, but let's just have a look. You can get it from the back as well. Just be careful when you're taking it off though. So that's the, that's the shell. You can sort of see the clips there as well at the front. So just be ta careful when you're taking that off that you don't rip this little section here, this little ribbon section. That's your heated tube connects into the PCB board. Uh, so try not to rip, rip that part, otherwise your heated tube's not gonna work. But now we can sort of just pop off this little part here. This is your cellular modem. So if you disconnect that, you're disconnecting your Wi-Fi. The machine won't send data to Re ResMed, which is, which is pretty cool, but there it is there. It's your cellular modem. So that's what they use to keep track of you, read your dreams, all your naughty dreams. SD card in there. Probably don't need to take that out, but probably can if you want. All right, so now we're getting to the crux of it. There's just this little part here. There's one more part just here on the side. Just got a clip. See that clip at the back? So just get, pull that clip. Boom. Now what I do is I just fold that over the back like that. Just be gentle with it. Leave it down. And now here's the motor casing where the foam is, pretty straightforward. It's just the one screw here. Boop, boop, boop. And then there's your casing. And now all we've got to take out is one, two, three screws, and then the foam's just in here. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. Ba -ba -da -da. Okay. There it is. That's the foam, and that is some damn good looking foam right there. That's exactly what you want to see. And what you can do is you just feel it. I mean, that looks, it looks nice. It's all in shape, no problems, good structure, good integrity, perfect foam, very strong. And so, yeah, if it's like that, you've got no problems. You can put it back in, put the machine back together, and away you go, which we'll do now. But if it's looking terrible, if it's all falling to pieces, then you've got a little bit of a problem because there's a chance that it's all sucked into your turbine here. And if it's in there, you know, you're gonna have to blow some air and try and sort it out, but not good if it's in there. 
All right, so let's put it back together anyway. So it just fits on there. You can see it's got a little cutout where the wires go. And then we put our turbine shell back together again. All just sort of fits in together. Put the screws back in one at a time. Slots in under that little part there. And it just slots into there. <coughs> Nice, right, just have a look, you can see it's sort of lodged in, everything's sort of matching up. Put the screw back in the top. Now we just fold over the lid again. Just make sure these little blue things match up because that's your pressure sensors, okay? So make sure here that matches up nice. These wires just tuck in under that. So let's make sure everything goes back in the same, exactly the same way again. We're just going to connect up the little parts that we took off here. It goes in here at the back. Oh. Side panel just slots on there. You can leave this off if you want, or you can put it back on if you want to connect back up to ResMed. All right, the cellular modem pushes on. Cool. And then we're just gonna put the shell back on. So start from the back, just peels over the front. Put the screws back in, put your chamber back in if you want to. On the back here, more screws. Button on, boop. And you're done. Pretty easy. All right, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. I just wanted to share that information with you, give you the heads up, because I know it's a lot to take in, but at the same time, you're better off knowing, especially if you're someone who's used an ozone cleaner in the past. At least now you can keep an eye out, and if you want, you can check your foam. Make sure that foam is not getting sucked into the blower, ruining your device, but also potentially ruining your lungs. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with your mates, and as always, look out for one another, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.